So let's now welcome Aidan Holland, um, Teaching Products Coordinator at the British Council. So welcome, Aidan. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Can you just confirm you can see my screen okay? Um, yep, I imagine you can't see my screen, otherwise you'd get in touch. Okay. Um, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Aidan Holland. I'm uh, EU Wide Europe Teaching Products Coordinator at the British Council. Um, and I work as part of the British Council um, Teaching Centre Network, um, which the main activity for which is, um, is is English teaching in the in the in the different countries in which in which there is a teaching centre. Um, my talk today is um, called Fle Practicality, Flexibility, and Creativity in Formative Assessment, and I'm going to talk about a specific case study from um, an assessment project which has been evolving over the last. Um, four or five years from the British Council Teaching Centre Network and in which I've, I've been involved. Um, I'm currently working with um, the assessment research group, so my colleagues um, Carolyn uh, Westbrook, um, James Dunley um, and Richard Spivey um, on, a, on, on this project at the moment, but it has, it has developed, but that's only been a uh, a recent addition, to, a recent evolution of the project. So, I'm going to be talking through um, our our experience trying to support teachers to implement a system of formative assessment more more effectively. Um, the I'll start with a little bit of background to the um, to the project. So, the British Council has teaching centres in around 50 countries um, around the world. Um, in which they they offer extracurricular English classes that are more or less um, three hours three hours a week, um, and students come out, outside of their school hours um, to improve their English. And they those students are anywhere from uh, very early years students up until up until adults. And and this specific project that I'm talking about is is really focused on secondary age learners. Uh, but we're all the time considering how um, how the system we develop can be applied to adult teaching and also um, um, to primary teaching as well. So the a little bit of background about the the materials that we use um, across the network. Um, six or seven years ago, um, most of these teaching centres selected their own teaching materials. Um, and the the courses that were offered in each one varied quite quite widely from the number of hours that they taught and but mostly from the, the material the materials that they chose so mostly based on either course books or materials that were developed in centers so there was a move in 2016 um to create our own set of materials um for secondary age learners uh, which is called Secondary Plus, um, and this consisted of a, a, a series of levels that were linked to the, the CEFR from A1 to C1, and in each level um, <clears throat> we developed a set of, of 10 different magazines, um, each magazine being based around a, a topic um, and culminating in a project, um, and it was very much um, the, the idea was to um, implement a, a project-based, task-based methodology in the class so students work through them through a magazine on a topic and then um, get input from reading, speaking and doing, so reading, listening and doing speaking and writing tasks that all culminated in and then fed into a project which they realised at the end of the magazine, um, many of which are presentation styles or um, simulations, role plays, negotiations, and sometimes writing reports, uh, for example, and, and, and it's, such as with the written projects. Um, so this, is, this was very much the, the, the idea of the course. Um, the set of magazines is, is similar to a magazine would be like a unit in a textbook, and magazines take about six to eight hours to complete. 
um, and normally centres use between anywhere between six and ten magazines over the course of a year, depending on how long how long their course is. Um, so just to to outline the session, um, I'll just give a little bit more. I'll give a few examples of the secondary plus materials, uh, what a magazine looks like. Um, I'll speak about how we've tried to promote reflective learning through an assessment for learning cycle, and the challenges that we've that we've encountered as a result of doing that. And then I'll explain the two different phases of the of the of the project. The first one based around the development of a of a my learning worksheet to accompany each magazine, which was basically a, a set of um, learning criteria, kind of um, success criteria for each of the projects in, in the different magazines, and with a reflection section that teachers could use uh, with students to make them more aware of what they were learning from, from one class to another. Uh, oh, sorry, towards the over the course of the project. Um, and then I'll be speaking later about phase two, in which our colleagues from the assessment research group in the British Council um, became become involved with and are leading on now, in which we're looking at mapping the British Council curriculum frames, um, which I'll speak a, a little bit more about um, later in the session, to the to the existing to, to one of the existing secondary plus levels to try and um, pin down the the constructs. Uh, the, the language constructs within that magazine so that we can better teach them and better report on them. And then I'll explain, uh, I'll just give a, I'll, I'll wrap up the presentation looking at where we're, where we're hoping to go from here. As I said, this is very much a, a project in, um, that's, uh, that, that's, that's continuing. Um, we'll be looking to, we're looking to develop a set of materials that we can use at the beginning of the next academic year in the EU and um, I'll be explaining what we, um, how we, how we hope this will develop um, in, over the course of the next academic year. So here's some examples of the of the, of the materials of the in-house materials that we that we developed called Secondary Plus. Um, the, the the magazine that we're looking at here on the screen is um, pitched at B1.1 level. Um, it's the first magazine in the set of ten, and I've just um, drawn your attention to the, the the end of unit project. So the the magazine it's, um, itself is about senses, and the and students work through a series of learning sequences in which they read short texts and listen to recordings and videos um, all around the, the topic of senses. And they're all the time working towards um, a project in which they have to create and present a showboard for a science fair. Um, the project comes towards the end of the magazine and is broken down into into a series of, of stages, which um, teachers work with work through with their students um, and in the in the preparation, planning, and then execution of the project. Um, in the materials, we. We tried to make the learning aims quite clear right from the beginning. Um, as you can see, they're down there at the bottom right of the page, and then they're all, all also included at the beginning of the, the various learning sequences in the magazines. You can also see the can-do statements at the top of the, of the project pages as well. Um, so right from the outset, um, the content development team, which is a department of the British Council that was responsible for um, developing these these materials um, envisaged that there would be that teachers would take an almost exclusively formative approach to to assessment and that in the teaching they'd they'd seek to in the teaching of the of a magazine and then a, se a series of magazines um, they would try and make learning aims transparent in all of the in our learning sequences in, in our classes and try to engage learners in an assessment for learning cycle so the assessment for learning cycle as, as, as they saw it would be to work with the can do statements that were represented the um, at the top of each page at the, the beginning of the magazine um, get students to um, 
share those with students at the beginning of a lesson and teach the lesson then go back to them and to see to what extent they felt they'd achieve them and to encourage reflection uh, student reflection on performance um, as much as possible and within the reflections um, the idea was students would identify opportunities for future learning and hopefully set action points. Um, as I've included on this slide a couple of examples of um, learning aims for one of the learning sequences from the example magazine that I showed you. Um, so for example, I can read and understand the blog post by a deaf teen about her life, and I can talk about the five senses. Then within the magazine, which is 12 pages, and there's a reflect section um, on the last page in which students are encouraged to reflect um, on the learning across the magazine. Um, of course, I think attending many of these sessions now, um, I think it's uh, it's clear that assessment for learning is 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 not uh, it is it's not an easy not an easy thing to implement in the classroom. And I can cert cert certainly testify to having taught many of these magazines with students, um, struggling to be able to get them to interact with the learning aims and self reflect and self reflect really. Um, in a in a way that's that's useful for them, and maybe in the way that was envisaged that they would be that they would be doing. Some of the main challenges that I've um, that I've seen that I've seen teachers have uh, with this is teachers um, in the context in which which I'm working have been very much used to testing rather than assessing. Um, so one of the one of the main challenges that I've seen in these materials is that teachers are working across, say, a 75-hour course over an academic year, and in that course they're asked to they're asked to report um, between two and three times um, on concepts on the on the four skills, and the four skills are defined simply as speaking, reading, writing, and listening. Um, the the magazines themselves don't really lend themselves to to testing um, so teachers have um, in order to be able to feel confident reporting on certain skills they'll bring in say for example um, Cambridge exam reading and listening uh, tests and they'll use the information gathered from that to, to feed into the end of term or the end of year report on um, that the students are given and um, so this is this is really at loggerheads with with what was envisaged that teachers would be doing in the magazine, which is engaging students with the text in the magazines and asking them to um, discuss how, well, I ask them to think about to what, extent, uh, what, what they found challenging about the texts and to develop strategies about um, to, to understand them better. Um, if, they're, if, they're, if they're to read similar texts in the future, for example, if we're talking about reading. Um, so teachers were very, very much used to um, testing and, and I think um, felt that it was more a more valid way of getting a result than, than assessing which they didn't hadn't really had hardly any input on and um, how to do and um, what this resulted in was classroom tests were of a, a poor quality in that they were badly chosen and didn't and often didn't relate at all to the materials that the teaching were the teachers were using. Um, the results of this were, results could be widely variable, variable um, and students, and something that's, that's reported in, in a lot of feedback from, from the different countries in which we operate, the students that feel, uh, feel that there's a lack of a clear sense of progress across, across, a, across a course. Um, teachers themselves struggled to engage students with the learning aims and we very much uh, found it challenging to get them to reflect successfully. Uh, if we go back to this project page example, um, as you can imagine, teachers work through a series of steps in order to get students to uh, create and present a show board for a science fair. So it's a, it's a presentation style in, in kind of a role play in which they have to choose a sense, uh, research the sense, practice giving, uh, create their show board, 
and uh, practice presenting that showboard to, to other people. And that could be another class come into their classroom to, to receive the presentation, or it could be recorded. Uh, there's different ways of, of executing it. And within, obviously within this, there's a lot of opportunities for assessing speaking. Um, but teachers, that these are just some of the some of the comments teachers made um, as, and, and gave feedback on. Um, I've summarised here. So they found it challenging to, well, they, they, they felt that they needed to evaluate all of the students and they felt it, it was challenging to evaluate them all at the same time. We're talking about classes of between 14, 14, 15 students here. Um, so not, not massive, but still still quite challenging to um, to, to evaluate. Um, if they focus their attention on specific groups, um, those groups become nervous and don't say very much. And um, there's no real criteria about the quality of the speaking that they're doing. So as the teachers aren't sure what they're evaluating against. Um, sometimes students don't speak for a very long during an activity and some, sometimes students can dominate. So the first stage of this, of, of trying to create a, a system of formative assessment um, was to give teachers um, some formative assessment tools, uh, which I've uh, summarized there in, in the green box. Um, so things such as self-assessment and peer assessment forms, um, clear success criteria for the, which were mostly focused on the productive skills. This was something that came out of this, this initial stage of the project that the, the, the receptive skills were, were very challenging to, to, to assess because there wasn't very much input in there. So it was, it was, um, it was thought it would be better to, to focus on the productive skills um, and supporting reflection and, and action point setting. And what we, what we developed in the initial phase of the project, as I said, I've, the, the, the project's gone through two phases here, um, were a series of my learning worksheets. Basically, the, the my learning worksheets, which took around 18 months to crystallize and develop, um, was, were worksheets that were focused on each of the uh, in, on, on each project in each magazine. So I think there's it's around 120 magazines. Uh, so there's a, there's a different My Learning worksheet for each one. And in it, um, the, the success criteria for the project as, in, as it is in the magazine uh, were stated on the page. So we're looking at different writing skills, speaking skills, and also something called the core skills, which um, which are evident in, in, in other published materials as well, um, things such as communication and collaboration, uh, citizenship, digital literacy. Um, these, were, these were also included in the My Learning Worksheet for the teacher to assess. Um, on the bottom half of the worksheet, uh, there's a space for the students to say how well they did um, and assess themselves on a, on a four-point scale, uh, which, is, which had a, a key at the bottom and also a space for them to, to reflect and set themselves some, some goals to improve in, in the future. Um, space was included as well for teacher, <coughs> teacher comments um, and the idea for this was very much to, for the teacher to support students who maybe struggled more to reflect, um, to, to reflect in depth um, about, um, about their learning. And I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. But, well, here, the, one of the main challenges of this worksheet, so the, the idea of the worksheet was that the teachers would, say, break the project down over two or three classes, and they've got the learning aims, the success criteria there, which they could share with the students at different points, and then teach different parts of the project and get the students to reflect back on them, and then complete the My Learning worksheet at the end. Um, some of the, these are actually some student reflections from a, from a, from a different magazine, um, uh, which is about sustainable tourism, but I think they I just included them to to illustrate um, that students can be reluctant to reflect in any depth, and they need a lot of support to make to make their reflections more um, specific, focused, 
time bound um, and also hope ideally identifying things that they can do in the future um, so this this was one of the one of the challenges here the second challenge uh, with this system was that the the reporting um, system which we still have which is different in in most of the teaching centers um, is, is quite traditional um, and doesn't really unpick any of the any of the any of the constructs that are that are within the magazine so here we can see an example from France um, in which teachers have asked to to report on these things at a four point scale um, and many teachers didn't understand how to channel the assessment for learning information uh, that they would have gained hopefully from the my learning worksheets into these reports uh, which are which are essentially quite um, relatively summative in in nature uh, even though there are no numbers um, even teachers in, in for example Spain rhyme based um, tried to assign numbers to to the different categories of excellent good satisfactory and work needed and um, so that was uh, the reporting system seemed to have a uh, seemed to put seemed to be a challenge to 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 put the information into. Um, so then the next phase of the of the of the project um, has uh, brought in the so in, in the next phase we, we've begun a collaboration with our colleagues in the assessment research group and we're we've we're fo currently focusing on the B1.1 level and we've tried to take a more holistic approach to the magazine. So we've tried to, so at the moment we're, we're, we're looking at the B1.1 course and the magazine and the 10 magazines within that. And we're trying to identify, or we're trying to crystallize the, the constructs, the language constructs that are within the magazines. So what are, we're trying to answer the question, what do these um, magazines teach? because mainly because the the can do statements in them um, are quite vague um, and clearly not creating the sense of progress or not they're not user friendly for the teacher or for the students really so the the way we're going about this is to use the British Council curriculum frames um, which is a, a set, basically a set of descriptors um, linked to the CEFR um in which they in which there's a specific section for um lower secondary age learners for which these magazines are, are targeted at and we're working with us part of a small team um to go through the magazine to go through each activity in each magazine and try and understand um and, and try and link it to one of these to to, to to one or more of these descriptors so i put a few examples on on this page so um, in the magazine example that I've given, um, which is about the sentences, uh, the, the first text in there um, has a classic reading sequence. So students uh, prepare to read through a discussion activity and then they do a reading for gist and a reading for detail. Um, and that then goes on to a, to a speaking activity in which, they, in which they react to the text. So the, the learning aims as they stand in the magazine uh, I can read and understand a blog post about a deaf teen about her life um, and the BCCF corresponding um, frame that we link to that is as you can see a lot more detailed um, and more specific both that one and the and the speaking one as well so rather than just I can talk about the five sen senses I can find and pass out pass on information uh, straightforward factual information so the idea with this um is to more clearly define the constructs across the magazines and mapping them to the cefr descriptors um, and this will hopefully be able to be reported on or taught um, and then reported on in, in in a way which will promote a greater sense of progress um, teachers will hopefully be able to when they see the um the more descriptive descriptors and um, they'd be able to have they'd be able to teach them more effectively and, and engage students with them and then channel the information that information into in, into a, a more coherent reporting system 
Um, I've put on this kind of coming towards the end here, and um, this is this is an, our, our idea for the reporting system. So um, it would uh, it would look at the all of the descriptors that we have over the course and say where they've where they're evidenced in the magazines, um, and then the idea would be as 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 we um, the students move through a magazine, they'll hopefully be um, touching on each descriptor a few times, and over the period of a course, um, the more they see, it, the more they touch on a descriptor, um, the better they'll get at it. So they'll they'll hopefully see a greater sense of progress. Um, this is work in progress. Um, we're at the initial stages of this. I think we've been working on it now for a couple of months. Um, after the summer break, um, we'll hopefully have all of the descriptors um, mapped to the magazines and we'll be working with groups of teachers to see how we can condense those into something that's workable and will create a sense of progress among the learners. And we'll be looking at a more standardised report template uh, for that. The other tools that we'd like to create around this would be level specific criteria and um, to assess the productive skills not just in the project pages but also in the in the rest of the magazines and training and development um around assessment literacy really um to look at promoting student reflections through an afl framework supporting teachers with that and also understanding how um, how this kind of information can be channeled in to reporting. Um, I think I don't want to go beyond the time here, so um, that's the that's the end of the project. Uh, that's the end of the summary. Um, I'd hope to be able to continue this story in in the in the in the new directions conference in in East Asia. I think we're we're talking about um, detailing it a bit more there. See how we go. Okay. Thank you very much, Aidan. Nice. So let's see, we have any questions from the audience? Oh. Great. We haven't seen. Okay. So there is a question that I have been heard um, asked a lot, and it is um, which were the teachers' attitudes towards this all this new initiative? So were they happy or kind of resistant? Uh, the teachers that um, in the initial phase, when we when we developed the my learning worksheets, teachers were really happy with the. Um, they wanted training about it, and once they had the resource, they were really happy that they had ideas for the success criteria which they could use with students. Because I think some of the some of them felt that they're being asked to teach an assessment for learning cycle, but often identify the learning criteria themselves is. A lot more work if you can see yes yeah okay so actually they felt supported that is really like a really nice yeah, um, outcome of all this okay so um we have a question from jamie dunley okay so is there a tension between producing standardized reporting frameworks across classrooms and teachers and a move to individualized feedback for learners um, I think from, from what I've seen, the reporting templates that we have, there's a lot of commonalities anyway. So I think the hope, I think there is attention in the sense that each, each centre wants to report on specific things uh, for, their, for their learners. Uh, but I think having the standardised reporting template, if it's, if it's useful, then I think the, that utility would, would be uh, a motivating factor for everyone. So I create some sense of progress. Okay. So individualized uh, feedback. I mean, the, the the assessment for learning cycle would hopefully promote that within the magazines themselves. It's just looking at then how to take that information and channel it into the report in an effective way. Okay. Okay. So um, thank you very much, Aiden. Thank um, you. Okay.